Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of it. I am Penjo and welcome back to MMORPG Tycoon 2 where of course we are back in the lovely lands of Cupboard Quest and we are down here with Anime God 123YT and Pierce Lock because these two have taken the brave and noble step of becoming the player class that we created last time out. These two are now master brewers which is very exciting indeed and very dapper they look too just stood here. I'd like to think they've come over here to have a little chat because of course that's what everyone does in Cupboard Quest. It's a lovely social place to be but I'd like to think that they're chatting and just giving each other compliments about how good they look because I do think that the uh, Master Brewers look very very good indeed. If we can just zoom in and have a little bit of a closer look. I mean look at that. That's wonderful. I mean, there is a little bit, there's a little bit of a hint of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band about that. I mean, if you don't know what that means, go and ask your parents, kids. But there is a little bit of that about it. And that's no bad thing. But yeah, the open shirt and the buttons and the thing on the shoulders and the, I mean, the hat. The hat just sets it off very nicely. And of course, all in lovely geek cupboard, sort of corporate yellow and blue colours. It looks very, very good. One thing I haven't really looked at in this game so far that I've just seen just there is the weapons. I've never really paid much attention to what weapons people have, but people have gone and got weapons. And indeed, you two, Anime God 123YT and Pierce Lock, have gone down very different routes for their weapons. So Pierce Lock, which is grating on my nerves because the I and the E are the wrong way round, in my opinion. Um, they've gone and got a sword. So they've just got a classic, a classic sword. I mean, it's got a little bit of a notch missing out of it just there, but a good old classic weapon. Whereas you here, uh, Anime God 123YT, you've gone for a wand. You've gone for a magic wand. So that's very interesting. What have they gone for over here? I've never really looked at the um, weapon models before. Um, you are called... What are you called? I don't know what you're called. You're called Garten's Ring. And you've got like a little sort of short halberd type thing. And then Kilia has got a sword, but a quite fancy looking sword with all sorts of some jiggity jaggedy spiky bits all over it. So yeah, there are different weapons. I've never really... I've never really looked into that. Maybe I should pay more attention to the weapons that our players have gone out and bought. Because, yeah, there's quite a lot of them by the look of it. Um, incidentally, Anime God 123YT was somebody that asked to be put into the game. So there they are. They're one of the master brewers, which is lovely. If you want to be included in Cupboard Quest, then just let me know. Just leave uh, your name or whatever you want to be called, I suppose. Because you might want to be called something different, I guess. Uh, but let me know in the comments and I will put you in. And you can be a player or a quest giver or whatever, an elite monster. Just let me know and we'll try and fit you into the lands of Cupboard Quest. So yes, the Master Brewers were what we created last time. So if we go and have a look here, there they are, Master Brewers, kind of not as strong, not as sort of healthy as the other player classes, but they have a heck of a lot of mana. Only 22 people so far have decided to become Master Brewers, but they've not really been around for very long, I don't think. I don't think we've actually run time on much since we've created this and let people choose. And abilities wise, they've got Brew Ferno, which I, I do like that. I like the idea of them just producing this massive sort of inferno of, of hot tea and just sort of blasting it at people. Um, and then a small cuppa to heal their friends up and then a fine time for tea to heal themselves up. Yeah, we do need at some point to go and do some more sort of level five and above abilities for people to, you know, to aim at because I think everybody's got level ones and level threes. I don't think anybody has any level five abilities yet. And there are now level five people playing so we might want to actually get that looked at but there we go uh, also we created some stuff last time as well we created the parotans which is very exciting indeed so sort of a zombie parrot type things that are wandering around bad game of cat bay which is where we are just now so they're in these sort of zones over here we've got a few people um a few quest givers saying go and kill them and i think we have seen people go out and fight the parotans oh there we go look Aiedon is going over this way, probably to have a little fight. So one of the Master Brewers is going to come over here just to do one of the quests and get some XP. And that's all lovely. So we created those as well. And we sort of fleshed out Bad Gamer Cat Bay a little bit as well. It needs a little bit more, needs a few more buildings putting around the place and some more scenery and stuff like that. And then what we're going to do today is we're going to work on this place over here. So we've gone from a kind of deserty place over here and over the hills, extreme climate change to this place here. This is the Hume's Heights. So this is going to be all frosty, it's all mountainous, it's all cold. As you can see, it's all blue and there's kind of big blue ice crystal-y things everywhere. And um, yeah, we're going to build a little place here. Over here, we're going to put some monsters, I think. So we'll have a little settlement over here in amidst these big sort of icy things. And yeah, some baddies over here. So we're going to sort this out today. That's what I want to get done today. But also, we're going to uh, create ourselves uh, another monster to go over here. And I think 
we're going to create another player class as well because we've got three more. We're going to get another one at 8,000 subscribers, which we'll get here sooner than we think because we're on 7,112 right now. So yeah, that is ticking up. So I think we'll be at 8,000 subscribers relatively soon. So yes, I think we can sort this player class out sooner rather than later. However, one thing we are going to do before all of that stuff is something that was suggested in the comments, and it's a very good suggestion, in that we've got the Master Brewers. They're very, very easily identifiable. They're blue. Mushroom Elves, pink. Again, they've got a very similar hat on. Do you know what? They've got the same hat on to the Master Brewers. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Then we've got the Treants. That's good again, yet they're very easily identifiable. However, the two classes that we started with all those days ago in Cover Quest, the Scout and the Warrior, they do look a little bit similar, don't they? They look very, very similar. I think they've got the same hat on. They kind of got the same body and the same colors and everything else. So let's go and just change these around a little bit. Just visually, we're not going to fiddle about with the skills or anything or the abilities. We're just going to change what they look like ever so slightly, he says, knowing that he's probably going to make them all sorts of ludicrous colors. So... Let's go to the model editor. Can we give the warriors a different hat? In fact, are the scouts, do you know what? The scouts are less likely to have a pointy hat because they're going to go out scouting. So I would say here in head, is there a hat which does not have, yeah, like that look. So already they're a little bit different. That's more of a scouting hat. I quite like that. So yeah, we'll apply that. And then have they got the same body as well? Have they got the same middle? So they've got that one there with a little pouch on the side. And the warrior's got that as well. Yeah, they've got the same body as well. So let's change the warrior body. Let's see if there is another body. Oh, no, hang on. Hang on. They've got that one rather than that one. Those two body sections look exactly the same to me. Is there any change in those? I don't think there is. Let's give them that one. Yes. That looks a bit more fighty, doesn't it? Oh, that one. That looks a little bit more sort of barbarian-esque almost. Uh, I mean, that one just looks hilarious, but I don't think we can do that one. That just looks a bit too silly. Um, that one, that one could work. I quite like the look of that, actually. That doesn't quite suit them quite as well as I would like. No, no, that just looks weird. That one, I quite like the look of that one, actually. Or that one. I mean, they are warriors. They're warriors, but warriors doesn't mean barbarians, does it? I'm thinking that looks a little bit more barbarian. Maybe that one look. They've got a bit of armor and stuff going on. So there we go. Right. So we'll apply that as well. So now we can see there's a little bit of difference already. So the scouts don't have the pointy hats and the warriors have got the different bodies. Now I think we just need to do something with colors because they're too similar still in terms of colors. So the warriors, what colors can we give you? So that's your skin, I believe. That's absolutely fine. We'll leave that as it is. Now, what is this? Oh, that's your eyes. Um, the warriors can have uh, dashing blue eyes, because uh, they, yeah, they're warriors, and they're all inspirational, so nice blue eyes there. Um, that's their beard colour, isn't it? Um, do you know what? We'll leave that as it is. I want to kind of get to the armour colour and stuff. Oh, that's the colour of the... That's the colour of the horns. Let's have them yellow, because, uh, yeah, a, a covered sort of corporate yellow, that's fine. And then this is where we get to go to town a bit. This is their actual armour colour. We want this to be a bit different. We want this to be interesting and unusual. And I'm thinking orange. I was thinking orange, a lovely burnished kind of orange color. Um, yeah, maybe maybe that one. That looks quite good. I like the look of that. So you know, their, their warriors are going into battle. Maybe their armor's got, I don't know, made of uh, copper or something. It's copper. Copper would be a terrible thing to make armor out of. Don't make your armor out of copper. Um, and then that one can be a slightly darker color like that. Yes, perfect. And the rest of it I think is fine. I think that and that can say the same. Or does that thing need to change colour? What's that? Oh, that's just a little bit on the... Over there. Yeah, that area. Um, how about we make that a uh, yellowy colour? Can we make that blue? Like Geek Cupboard Blue? Where's the Geek Cupboard Blue? There. There we go. I quite like that. So we'll apply that to the Warriors. So yeah, they just look now look a little bit different. Oh, I say a little bit different. They look radically different. And then the Scouts... I'm thinking more making them green, because if they're scouting, they might be going out and hiding in trees and stuff like that, like rangers. So how about we just make you a little bit more green if we can? So let's start with green eyes. That might be quite good. Uh, yeah, darker green. Uh, that one there. Green eyes like that. That's going to be... Well, that's a bit around your hat. Um, okay, can we make that? No, no see, I'm thinking let's make it yellow, but if they're scouting, they might want to be hidden a little bit. So there we go. That kind of yellow colour. Um, this is, that seems to be absolutely nothing at all. And then this is where the armor is going to come in. So let's make you green. Oh, they look a little bit, a little bit sort of Robin Hood-esque. And I am absolutely on board with that. Yes, I approve of this look. 
I don't think we need to adjust any of the other things either. I quite like that. Oh, hang on. Can we make them? Can we think, have a geek covered corporate belt buckle? There we go. Oh, I like that. Right, now come back. So we can see that the scouts are green. They're, they've essentially just become Robin Hood. The warriors are in orange because why wouldn't you want to look like this as a warrior? That's fabulous. Imagine, I don't know, a hundred of these charging into battle. That'd be terrifying. So they look good. Yeah, and everyone now has their own sort of individual kind of look. Let's just see if that updates in the game as readily as I kind of hope it does. I don't know. I mean, does it change immediately? Do all the players have to restart again? Yeah, look, all the... Oh, dear. Have I just booted out all of those players? Have they all just gone? Oh. Hang on a minute. Let, let's let's go back in. Yeah, now look. Is, that, is the number online going to come down drastically? Because I can't see any warriors or anything anywhere. Let's have a little look. Uh, I'll maybe they've all got to come back out. But there they go. Look. They've had their colours changed. Oh, yes. They look amazing. Okay, right. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That is brilliant. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, that was probably a very important thing to actually get sorted. Because, um, yeah, they did look a little bit... I mean, A, they looked a little bit too samey. And B, they were a little bit kind of drab. So, yes, thank you for pointing that out, commenting people. That's very, very good. So, yeah, we've changed that around a bit. They all look a bit more exciting. So, let's go over to Hume's Heights. Um, the thing about this is... We kind of want to build something up in the middle, but we're a little bit strapped for cash. So what we're going to do is we're going to run time on quite some bit, I think. We might need to run it on until we've got at least 20 grand, I think, because we're going to need to build respawn points and landmarks and paths and everything else, shops, and all that is going to cost quite a bit of cash. So I think what we'll do is we'll run time on until we've got about 20 grand. Hopefully the positive buzz will have topped out at a thousand by then as well. If we just run it on quite quickly, positive buzz is ticking up very nicely indeed. Um, subscribers is going up slower than it has done in the past. I mean, there are people unsubscribing. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, it's ticking up slower. Dave Wee Hours has died. That was careless, Dave. Dave Wee Hours has died twice. We've won an award. Is it for killing Dave Wee Hours? Hang on a minute. Dave Wee Hours has died again. Um, right, hang on. What did we win the award for? The best quests again. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you still sure that we've got the best quest? I mean, I know we can rename the quest now, which is brilliant. And I do like that. I, I, do we have the best quest? Do you know what? I'll take it. I'll absolutely take the best quest. That's absolutely fine. Also, our subscribers has just gone down. Hang on. When did that happen? I look away for one second and we've lost ourselves about 300 subscribers. Weren't we on 7,100 and something? And now all of a sudden we're on 6,843. What's happened there? Why have we lost a massive pile of subscribers? Um, okay, never mind. Right, we'll just run things on. I'm sure it'll all be fine in the end. So uh, yes, we need to run time on to get some money because we do not have very much of it. And of course it will have gone down a bit because we would have paid all the uh, people their wages. Dave Wee Hours has logged out. Was it a rage quit? Because he just died a number of times. Asden has died. Oh dear, Asden. Whereabouts are you, Asden? What are you going to go and do now, Asden? Let's have a little look. What are you going to do? Oh, you're one of the warriors. You look amazing. Right, you're having a fight. Ah, you're fighting. Oh, yeah. You're fighting the Bear Easters. But the Bear Easters seem to be killing you quite easily indeed. Um, That's fine. It's a challenge. This area is a challenge. That's the whole point of Dave's Land of Latte. It's dark. It's sinister. It's evil. It's the place where you go if you want to do some proper tricky sort of hard combat. Um, yeah, the positive buzz has absolutely plummeted as well. When did that, like, did something happen at midnight? Did something happen at midnight? I'm a bit confused of why all of a sudden that's gone all sorts of weird. Because positive buzz was up to 900 and we had over 7,000 subscribers and that came down, the subscribers, and the positive buzz has plummeted as well. Okay, never mind. I don't really know what happened there. I'm sure it'll all sort of resolve itself. It'll all be fine. Um, right, so let's wait for the money to roll in. Let's just wait for us to get another 10 grand at least, I would have thought. And um, what I might do is I might just wander about the place and just see if there's any people cheating. And we'll just go and tell them off. And we'll say, you cheating people, stop cheating. Anna, stop cheating. Orakara, desist thy cheating. Omspor, cheat no more. Akar, you have been warned. There we go. So it's about lunchtime on day four of month two. We've got ourselves 25 grand. So in about half a day, we've made ourselves what? just over 15 grand 
that's not bad going. That's pretty good. Um, subscribers are back up and positive buzz is creeping up as well, which is nice. What I'll do is next time it gets to midnight, I'll have a look and just see if that brings the numbers back down. Maybe something happens at midnight to reset certain things. I do not know. So now we've got a little bit of money so we can sort this place out. So we can have a little look at what we can do with the Hume's Heights. The first thing we're going to need to do is actually get a path into this place because there is no way in as it stands right now. So let's go in through here. That was always the plan. So that bit comes in, you come in through Vosseros Valley and you go over here. I would also like a way in from this side. If we could come in from the Ebba Forest, that would be great. The only thing is, I don't know how that path is going to work. I imagine that path is not attached to anything on that side. So if we click that and put that in, the path on that side is absolutely fine. We can connect that side up. It's this side that I don't know how it's going to work because that path is on the top of a mountain right now. That's on the top of a mountain. How is that going to work? Like, can we bring that down? Yeah, we can't do anything with that. It crosses untraversable terrains. There's nothing we can do with this. Ah, now, hang on. What we could do is, could we go into the scenery? No, the terrain bit. Um, yeah, so it's icy mushroom grove, mountain and chasm. Could we just turn that block into an icy block? Does that bring that path down at all? And that one, perhaps? Okay, there we go. Right, that might be what we have to do. So we've got a couple of ways in, which is fine. And then, yeah, there's still mountains and stuff. So it's still mountainous. It's still the Hume's Heights. It's all good. Um, okay, and it's added in a kind of uh, sort of a crystal -y thing, like an ice crystal thing. Lovely. So they're now in. So we can go back to paths. I am going to join them up just around the edge of the edge of the mountains there. Just link those paths together, just sort of like that. And then we want the settlement to be over here. So the settlement is going to be in this place. Now, what I would like is in the... Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. We can upgrade. And we want to do that now because when we upgrade, it will then reset us to version 3.3.00, I assume, or 3.3.0. So um, anything we spend now is kind of wasted toward our next version. So let's do an upgrade now. And I think this is a big one. I think this is one of the big fancy upgrades. No, it's not. Okay, that must scale. That must scale up. So when you're on version 1, you just need to go get up to version 1.1 .1 to get the fancy upgrade. Version 2, you need to get to version 2.3, was it? No, hang on. Version 1, you need to go to 1.2 to get the big upgrade, where you get to pick to choose your fancy, you know, your world lore and your flight paths and all that. Version 2, you need to get to version 2.3. So I imagine in version 3, you need to get to 3.4 to go up to the next version. I think that's probably how it's going to work. I Maybe. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm not entirely sure. So let's have a look. So we've got one point. Um, not going to spend it on advertising. Not going to spend it on combat. Might spend it on fluff, theme and exploration. Get people looking at the theme. Get people enjoying all the stuff they can see. Get them exploring, going looking at stuff. So let's have a point of that. I also wouldn't mind another point of lovely hugs, just in case, because you know, that's what kind of cover quest is all about. But let's get a point of fluff. Let's get them to get a point of fluff. There we go. It's a shame you don't get more than one each time. But plus 16% to theme and exploration. Let's release version 3.3.0 of Cupboard Quest. And I mean, by the time we've finished building all this stuff, we'll be, what, at least a third of the way, I would have thought, through to version 3.4. So let's get this done. So I had an idea. I had an idea in the scenery over here, because this place is quite cold. It's quite chilly up in the mountains. There is a little fireplace thing somewhere. Um, where is it? There, look. One of these. I mean, they're quite big. I mean, OK, from up here, it's not that big. But compared to the size of the players, they're quite big. So let's put that just there. And we'll put several of these is the idea. So this can be sort of the heart of this place, this, uh, this little settlement. And this can be keeping people warm. And then also we'll get some of these because these look like little sort of burner type things. So we'll put one there, one there, one there and one there. And this can be sort of the nice warm middle. I'm thinking kind of Frostpunk. In the middle of Frostpunk, you had your great big generator thing with the heat. So I'm thinking that's going to be what we do here. And then we want to get our paths. We want to build around this so the path can come up from here. You can go round to here. So we'll finish that one off. And the idea I want is I want it to kind of just come round so that people can just sort of gather around this middle bit here. That's like the idea of this being the centre. 
So let's just see if we can actually work this round. Is it going to let me? Oh, that's a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That was a little bit rubbish. Oh, no, I've got, I've got to the end of the limit, I think, of the path. Oh, the path's gone a bit. Oh, it's gone a bit strange. Yeah, it doesn't like that, does it? That's gone a little bit weird. I can't I can't move the path because it doesn't like it. Um, okay, right, hang on, hang on. We'll undo. Edit undo. We'll try again. I don't think it liked the... Um, it didn't like that, did it? Maybe... Okay, I'll give it one more go. I'll give it one more go. And if it doesn't work, we'll come up with something else. But I'm I'm determined to make it work. I just want a, a path that's a, a circle. I'm not sure a circle is going to work because it keeps trying to snap to the point and make straight lines. So we might just have a diamondy type thing. So there we go. So one from there, one to down there. Yeah, one up to that side, which works. And one to there. There we go. I mean, yeah, it's a diamond. Or if you turn it around, a uh, square. But whatever. It's still a thing around our little sort of heat centre there. And then we'll bring that up to there. Then we can have a bit branching off this path. Maybe just going by the base of this mountain look, to be all dramatic. That can go out to there. And then we can just have... I'm kind of thinking we just have a bit that goes out that way, which is where people can live. So we'll just drop a bit like that. That's nice. Uh, and then a bit over this side, just so it goes near to the near to the big kind of crystally thing, is because they look very impressive. And then we just have a we'll have a sort of a grid, if you like. Intex another path, really? Oh crikey's okay, fine. It's being a little bit sort of fussy with its path placement. Okay, fine. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll bring in another bit like that. Put that there. And then we'll just sort of branch that out to that side. Yeah, I quite like that. And then we'll just sort of make this. Maybe we'll have a little bit here as well which just sort of comes out and round so like that there we go that looks good i like that and then we'll just sort of put things into here so already we're on version 3.3.26 what i've done is built some paths crikey um okay so we need some proper buildings we need all this stuff so we're gonna need a respawn point let's put the respawn point over this side let's tuck it over there because it's still not too far away from everything else. And we'll put it right nearby as well. There we go. So normally we have them away, sort of out in the middle of nowhere. But that's fine. It's cold around here. We'll tuck it over there. Um, and then we need a landmark tower thingamabob. Get one of these in. We'll tuck that at the back, I think. We'll put that over there. Because I don't think it fits in the middle. But I know it does. It fits just there, actually. There you go. We'll put it in the middle. Doesn't destroy any paths or anything. Uh, and then we want to get the inns. We'll have a couple of inns. Uh, we'll have one in. Maybe on the path this side, coming up in that direction. And we'll have another in, maybe over this side as well, just to get people moving through the city settlement type area. Um, and then, of course, we want a couple of taverns. So we'll drop a tavern just here on this corner, if you would be so kind. And maybe one over this side as well. So you come out the respawn point and you can go and get a drink because you probably need one um, of, you know, of uh, tea, obviously. Uh, and then we'll have ourselves a potion shop on that corner. We'll have a couple of shops over here and keeping an eye on the money because we do want to actually get the network sorted for this place as well. So a couple of shops and then the blacksmith can go just here, just like that. Um, of course, in scenery, we do need to make sure that we put a henge into this place. All of our places have got lovely henges. And um, that one can go just there. In fact, no, let's put it in the middle of here. This can be a little a little sort of uh, a little area where we can have the henge and we'll put some other rocks and stuff by it. Let's put some, some grass bits by it. We'll put a bit of grass there, a bit of grass there, extra bit of scenery building. Uh, we'll put a rock just there. We'll have another rock with writing on on that side if you come through. Um, and then yeah, nothing looks sort of cold. Maybe one of those. Another rock like that. I don't want it to be in the way of the henge, to be honest. We'll put that on the corner like that. We're already coming up to halfway to the next version. And we've not really done anything too silly with scenery items. That's quite good. Okay, so before I blow all the money on scenery and then realise I've got nothing to actually connect to the network, let's get the network sorted first. So we'll put an uplink kind of just there, because why not? And then we will get the fibre optics in to connect it to the other uplinks. This could be an expensive fibre optic link. Oh, it's going to be really expensive. Good grief. Okay, connect that in. 3,400. Ouch. And the one over here... I wonder if we can even get that connected. It's very hard to see with the with the mushrooms in the way. Um, bring that up. Can we bring it round like this? Yeah, I think we might have to do it that way. Uh, it's too long, it says. Oh, no. Yeah, we're going to have to look after, uh, do something about that. We're going to have to look at 
Maybe making that slightly different. Uh, oh yeah, we can't afford it. Oh, that's the problem. Okay, right. Okay, abandon that one for now. We don't need to do that one. That's not one that we need to get implemented. So we've got ourselves 3,547. That's now connected to the network, which is lovely. And then we can just build some regular cables just to power up this little bit here in the actual city itself. And then over there, uh, because we want to put a bit of a monster zone over that side. That's the plan. Um, and then anything coming through on the path on the way down, maybe we'll just sort of put a little bit going over this side as well, just to get anything over here kind of populated and you know, loaded up and stuff. Um, okay, right. So now we need to go through. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the lack of money because, um, yeah, we, we need some money to put down things like quest givers and guards and what have you. Um, okay, let's have ourselves, uh, let's have a triant guard as you come in on this side. They're only $100, so that's absolutely fine. So we can put those in. A Mushroom Elf Guard as you come in from this side, because they might be coming in from the Mushroom Elf City. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and then we'll have a Warrior Guard and a Scout Guard. Why not? We'll put them just sort of there like that. Um, I wouldn't mind the scenery of, of the Lookout Tower type things, because there's a couple of those Lookout Tower things in. I like the fancier looking ones. So yeah, we'll put them... Put one there and one there, so either side of the path, just like they're making sure that nothing nefarious is coming this way. So there we go, and of course, it's all adding to the version. Okay, I think that'll probably have to do for now. The trainers are expensive, aren't they? How much is one of them? 500. Yeah, that's gonna be quite costly. Also, there's no master brewer trainers anywhere, is there? Oh yeah, we need to sort that out. Hang on, um, let's put one over here. Let's put a master brewer train over here in the Eber Forest. It's very busy over here. Let's put you just there so you can go and train people up at least. Because, um, yeah, we've got, well, we've got one now. We don't have any of them. That's a little bit of an issue, isn't it? Um, and then how about we put another one over here near one of these places. So in the dark and sinister days land of Latte, we shall put another master brewer trainer. And now we don't have very much money at all. So we need to leave that. So just run along now. People can come over here. There's not really much for people to do here, however. So people can come into this area and go look around and go, ooh, isn't it pretty? Huh, yeah, yeah, it is. Great, bye. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure the network connects to everything. Let's just make sure that everything, there you go, look, data streaming into the node. It looks like everything should be working okay. There you go, buildings are appearing, stuff is happening. Some of the buildings are in, the inns are in, one of the inns is in, that inn should go in shortly, hopefully. At some point, please appear in. Uh, there we go, is that it appearing? But they'll be fine. Right, hang on, move it on at super speed. Let's just get them in. Right, everything is in. Are people coming in to look at this place just because it's a new area? Or does nobody actually care at the moment? Because there's nothing for anybody to do there. Um, maybe nobody is bothering at the moment. I can't see anybody walking along the paths or anything. Um, do you know what? We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see if anybody comes over here to our lovely new sort of icy city. It looks great as well. It looks proper sort of snowy and windswept. Look up there through the gates. Look, that looks very, very nice. I like the fact you can see the big kind of crystally blue things in the background. So yeah, it looks the part. It looks nice. Let's just hope that people come over here, even though there's nothing really for them to do here. And there are people coming in. The first person to come in is going to be Arise, Arise the Warrior. Hang on a moment there, Arise the Warrior. Hang on a second. Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Your body is not the right colour. Your 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 helmet is the right colour and your sleeves are the right colour. You've got the lovely orange, but your torso here is not... That's not the one we've chosen. That's the original one. Hang on a minute, what's going on there? The Warriors have got the ones with the little sort of belt and then the, the bit that covers their modesty a little bit. Why is that not updated onto the actual models themselves? Let's apply that and just see what happens. Have I just ruined Arise's chance of becoming the first person to arrive it? Yes, I have. Oops. Okay, it's fine. Ar oh, no, Arise is back. There we go. There we go. Maybe I didn't do that properly, although when I went into the character model itself, it was there. Okay, whatever the case. That's better. Right, the warriors are now more orange than they were before. Yay, and a couple of mushroom elves coming in. Idor and Eliakar. Eliakar, you're going... Are you going a bit quicker, Eliakar? Do I need to check you? No, no, you're fine. All clear, all clear. It's all good. Is everybody over here playing nicely? Everybody's playing nicely, I think, by the look of it. So people have come over from 
the uh, why are you going over that way? Why are you doing that? Oh, there's loads of people coming in. Okay, right. I noticed we now have 2,000 of the monies. That means that we can pause time for a second. And that means we can get ourselves a quest giver over here. Because at the moment, there's nothing for anybody to do. So let's get in a master brewer quest giver. You can stand just here. And then we'll get ourselves another quest giver. It leaves us with $154. That's it. Oh, dearie me. Um, we'll get ourselves a scout quest giver. And we'll put you over here. Put you over here behind uh, behind this near the side of this inn just here, and we'll give them at the start just the basic quests, which will give you a basic quest to go and look at some stuff. So Ellen the Wise, locate the princess, go to the tavern, enjoy the scenery, and find the king. Now, there's all sorts of royalty going on here. I like the fact that the uh, princess is in the tavern. Joe, you know what I'm fine with those two. The king is hiding out in a clock tower and the princess is getting drunk in the tavern. Absolutely. Right. Add a new quest. Discover the town council. Go to the respawn point. Uh, it was a bad day for the town council when they put the rates up. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> they all had to respawn. Um, no, let's not have you looking at that. That's just very silly. How about we get you spending some money? Locate a sausage. No, no. No, no, locate a sausage, not not in the land of the blacksmiths. That's not how it works. Best quest, everybody. Best quest. Award winning for our quests. Um, let's not have locate a sausage. Let's have buy um, a shiny new weapon. There we go. Specifically a shiny one, please. Um, and then you can have, maybe you can have more. Uh, search for even more beer. Go to the inn. Yeah, Joe, you know what? I'm happy with that. Bring me even more beer. Go to the tavern. We've already got someone going to that tavern. So let's alter it to go to that tavern just there. And then um, discover a sausage. They're obsessed with sausages over here in this place. The Humes Heights, they love they love the sausages over here. Um, not bring me more beer. Um, buy a potion that goes boom. There we go. Buy a potion that goes boom. Um, I don't know if we sell those. I assume we do. Okay, so three quests for you, three quests for you, and that's about all we can do right now. So let's just see. I imagine people are going to flock around the quest givers sooner rather than later. They're going to go into here to set their thing as their home. Are they going to go and chat to the quest givers? Yes, they are. Idol, you've got yourself a new quest. What are you going to go and do? Picked up a quest. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, there you go. You're going to go over there. I know, where are you going? Idor is going to go to the potion shop. Is that where you're going, Idor? Uh, I know you might be going to the inn first or the tavern or whatever. Okay, right. Well, have a nice time, Idor. More people are heading into our little village here, which is wonderful. So I think now let's see if we can design a new monster. So we've got our classic monsters here. We've got the crocodile, the spider, the kobolds and the skeletons. We're going to leave those. We can get rid of the bear. I think we now can make our own exciting monsters. As we can see with the coffins and the baristas and the parottas, we can make our own baddies. So let's get rid of the bear. Now, no offence, bear. Because you're, you're fine and you'll probably come back in another one of the other monster slots we've got. But we're going to change you to something else. And this idea was, I think, it was suggested in the comments. It might have even been suggested by the person after whom the Humes Heights is named. Which that would be quite good, wouldn't it? Um, but yes, it's a, it's another good pun. It's a tremendous pun. So let's give ourselves a name for our upcoming monster. So it will still look like a bear for now. But our new monster for this nice frosty snow covered region is going to be called a yeti. Do you see what we've done there? It's a clever pun, you see, because like a yeti, like the big kind of monstrous sort of fur covered thing that lives in the cold, I believe, uh, which is spelled Y-E-T-I. This is a yeti, but with, with T, you see, because Cupboard Quest is all about T. I'm sure you got that. So uh, the idea is that the yetis, obviously they're not going to look at the bear, we'll change that in a moment, but the yetis have been, uh, they've been driven crazy by the coffee people. The coffee people came in and the yetis tried a bit of coffee and it ruined their taste buds forever. And now they are furious that they cannot taste the lovely tea taste ever again. And they've kind of become these sort of uh, horrible, angry kind of beings now. They were you know, all right once upon a time, but now they've become these reclusive sort of monsters that live out in the mountains, uh, furious and full of rage. They can never taste tea once again. So that's what the story is behind the yetis. Now, of course, we do need to get these things set up because they don't kind of look right at the moment. So we'll put them to humanoid because that's what they do and can we just have you idle for now so we can see what you look like now they're not going to be too far off this they're not going to be too far off this however there was one of the head models that i thought would look really good it was kind of like a 
uh, like that one might be good. Uh, wasn't there one which looked a little bit more like a sort of a Minotaur sort of type head? Yeah, like that. I quite like the idea of that one. That looks good. But we'll just make them all sort of white and stuff, obviously, because they live in the snow. Um, yeah, it's either that one or that one. I do think the other one looks a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? That one, uh, yeah, not really bad. That's more of a cobalt sort of head thing, isn't it? Yeah, let's go for this one. Let's go for that. It also fits quite well with the, the rest of the body that we've got. I want my bringing the arms and stuff in a little tiny bit. Um, and what we'll do is we'll give you a tail as well, I think. We've got a tail, apparently. Really? Oh, it's a really short, stubby tail. Oh, okay. Um, how about we give you a tail that's... Yeah, is the character model for this enormous? Okay, that's a bit that's a bit confusing, but okay, fine. Uh, we'll give you um, that tail. Yeah, the, uh, all the proportions seem really odd. Everything just seems really oddly proportioned. Um, and then we'll bring the arms and legs in a little bit, because they seem a little bit kind of... a little bit far away. So we'll just bring them in a little bit. Now, is that what the arm of a yeti is going to look like? That's more of a bear arm, isn't it, actually? Let's... Let's have a look. Left arm, what's going to be better for a Yeti? Because, I mean, they're, they're not bears. They probably do have hands as such, but they're more human-y hands, that kind of thing. Um, what have we got that's not a human hand? Um, a hook, which I do quite like. Um, yeah, more that. That's more of a bear-type hand. Do you know what? That'll probably do. There we go. The Yetis can look like that. And maybe they're really cross as well because they they haven't got their fingers anymore so they can't drink tea. I don't know. Uh, right, and let's shrink their arms down a bit because they are quite grandiose, those things, and push them up a tiny bit. Okay, so we'll bring that down a tiny bit and then push it upwards all the way. Yeah, I do you know what? I like that. I'm happy with that. So we'll apply that. And then the legs do need to come in as well. I think the legs might also need to be swapped around a bit. Yeah, okay. A bit like that. Do we need to bring the legs in? Do we need to bring the legs in ever so slightly? Just a little tiny bit? Possibly. Like that. Right, apply. Okay. That looks that looks good. They kind of look... I can imagine them being cross and ferocious. Can we bring the head down the tiniest bit? No! Okay, right. Um, okay, I can't put it back up to the 1.3 that it was on previously. Uh, that'll, that'll probably have to do then. Okay. I mean, yeah, they look a bit odd. It's fine. I mean, you know, they're, they're former tea drinkers who can't drink tea anymore and they're really cross. So they're probably going to look a little bit out of sorts. And I mean, the colour scheme is going to be very simple. We're just going to make it varying shades of sort of white and grey. So, I mean, most of it's already done for us. That's their eyes. They can have terrifying red eyes because they're really cross. Um, and this is their hair. So they can have sort of maybe sort of a greyer kind of hair like that. But everything else, I want it to be not entirely... Yeah, their claws can be a different colour. Like they're sort of their, whatever they are, their hooves or whatever. They can be a different colour. So we'll make them... Um, what would look good? No, not that. They're supposed to be hiding out in the in the, you know, in the the cold. Um, maybe yeah, just a darker sort of a grey colour like that. And everything else, you know, I mean, I'm quite happy with them looking like that. I'm okay with them looking like that, like a Yeti monster. Because they'd be sort of white and furry. I mean, we can't do the fur quite so readily but yeah I think that's okay is there a fur body is there a fur sort of shaped body that's skeletony that's I don't know what that is that's just odd um oh yeah I don't think there, there was the bird one where was the bird body that we use for the birds um it must be in here somewhere oh, there it is a bit like that yeah that, I'm not I'm not liking that I'm not loving that no, I think that's the body we'll stick with. Also, I have changed their arms. I quite like the idea of having those arms on as kind of sort of proddy sort of uh, thing. So, yeah, they can go and jab people in the eye or whatever. So, uh, OK, that'll do for their appearance. And they, they'll blend in quite nicely in this sort of snowy background, which is sort of the idea. Uh, we need to give them some abilities. They've got swipe and maul, which are the two basic things they come with. I think we can do better than that. Okay, so our first attack, I've changed it to a missile range attack because it's going to be a snowball fight. They're going to lob snowballs at their opponents. It's going to cause one health damage on whoever it hits and it's going to make them very, very cross indeed. It's going to charge up their rage. They're going to be full of fury at the snowball fight. And then that means they get to deploy Tealess Fury. So a melee, uh, melee attack, self-rage minus one. So they use it the rage they've earned and it causes three health damage upon the target and the snowball fight attack is obviously white because of snow Tealess fury is red it's the red rage of a kind of bull weird yeti monster thing so i think they're okay i think they are done 
Um, let's give them, yeah, they don't need mana. They've got quite a bit of rage anyway to start with. Let's give them a little bit more health. Let's give them 14 health because that might be quite tricky for people to go and deal with. But yeah, they have got a lot of rage. So they could use Tealess Fury already. Actually, they're going to be quite devastating with that much rage. Let's bring that down to 16. Okay, there we go. So we've designed the Yeti. There they are there. The only thing is we can't really put any Yeti zones down right now because we have no money. So what we need to do is we'll move time on. The idea is the Yetis can go over here. They can go over here in this area between these two sort of scary looking trees. And we'll just send people off on a little path around that way. But yeah, we need some money first. We need to get some cash in to build a monster zone because I imagine it's going to be relatively expensive to design one of those. Uh, let's just pause it as we get to two grand. We're getting quite close to two grand because people are still joining. People are still joining Cupboard Quest. There we go. So how much is it going to be to put an area of these things down? Oh, not actually that much. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. So let's put that in. So that can be 400 of your monies. So that's okay. Let's make it a bit bigger, actually. Let's get a few more monsters in there. So we'll zone that out like that. I won't mind there to be a little... A little zone of them, maybe. Just a pocket of them over here, perhaps, or something. Um, and also, I won't mind an elite to go in as well. Let's get an elite yeti in there. I don't know how much it costs to put an elite down. Um, seemingly nothing. It costs nothing to put an elite monster down. Oh, okay. Well, that's refreshingly simple then. And then, we want to get you, quest giver folks. So, Claudiscon the Bold. Claudiuscon. That's a big name. Uh, right, you can have a quest to go over here and fight those. So massacre the Yetis. A bit harsh, but okay, fine. And add a new quest. Bash the Yetis. No, we'll edit that. Uh, you can fight uh, the big one. No, not, no, 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 not the Yetis. The thing that I just clicked on. You, the big, no, the, the, the elite one. The elite one that's just here that I'm clicking on. There you go, investigate Mohoramsham. I don't think that's what we should call that thing. Okay, and then the other quest giver can have the same sort of thing. Or do you want to have another? I think that's where the Yetis are going to be. I don't think there's going to be anything else in this area monster-wise because it's too close to the city otherwise. And that's not really... Unless we put some over here on the side in the mountains, but then that might be a bit close to the players. They might sort of run out and start attacking players. And um, for now, we'll get you, quest giver... Um, me gosh, level three mushroom elf. Oh no no, you're you you're not. No, I want the quest giver. Can I have the quest giver, please? I appreciate that me gosh is talking to the quest giver. Can we talk to the quest giver, the scout? And there you go, Ellen the Wise. Hello, Ellen the Wise. Um, yeah, you search for my shoes. No, discover my left sock. Best quest, everybody. Best quest. Um, yeah, you go over there. Call the Yetis. Only do four for you, and then you can then have. Go and fight Mizraj or whatever it was. No, that what? Fight the big thing. No, you're, you're not getting on where I'm clicking, are you? Click on that one there. Okay, so kill four. Go and do that. Um, now I think we need to rename you. We need to rename you there because, uh, yeah, you're not, you've not got the right name. We've got various people that have said, can I please be an elite? So let's go and look at who is on the list. Okay, from now on, you can be known as Lusoria or Lusuria or Lusuria. I don't know how you pronounce it, but that word there, who did ask to be an elite. So there you go. You are an elite yeti out here in the cold, in the wilderness. We need this place to actually get sort of... Uh, ah, I was going to say, has it got a network thing on it? It's got a network thing right in the middle, which is wonderful. So let's just watch it ping into life. Let's just make sure this area can indeed work. And at some point it will begin. Yay, there we go. So if we go and have a look, we can see all the Yetis just wandering around. Oh, they've got like a black stripe down their back. Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, that's adorable. They kind of, they look a bit like badgers, but not really like badgers because, you know, badgers don't have horns or red eyes or indeed a little kind of, a little goatee beard. But apart from that, badgers, I think what we might do is just run a little path into their area maybe just to loop around those trees possibly if we can do that uh maybe i have to go by the bottom of that tree and then come around there and just sort of join back there just so players do have a path to go on just have a little walk around and then let's just get some scenery in because the scenery is fun um yeah they look like the type of things that are going to have 
sort of bones and stuff scattered around the place. So we'll chuck a couple of these things around. And of course, this is all going to what our version. Uh, yeah, we'll have a few of those. Um, yeah, some skulls, maybe of you know, previous battles and stuff. So a few of them have, have died in battle, maybe in fighting as well. Um, oh, there's a big skull thing there. Let's just put that next to the path just there. That's quite scary. And another one just there. Um, and then they're probably going to have some very basics, aren't they, these things? So they're going to have, like, boxes and stuff. I'll make them a little a little sort of camp type thing. So there you go. So we'll put a couple of boxes in, some crates where they keep their goodies. Don't know what they would eat. but And then maybe some logs where they can sit and chat about the difficulties of being a Yeti and being so misunderstood. So yeah, they can have a little sort of camp thing around there. Um, I don't imagine they're going to want a fireplace because, you know, they're they're kind of cold. They like the cold. They're fine with that. Um, I don't really know what that is, but we'll put one of them just there anyway. Hooray, hooray for the weird thing. Oh, and there's like a cooking pot thing. Oh, it's, I mean, it's absolutely massive. It's utterly enormous. But yeah, okay, we'll put that just there. And then I want to get some more sort of big, exciting scenery bits. So uh, yeah, some like rocks and stuff. Just chuck a couple of those around. Put some rocks around. And yeah, these things. I like the... Oh, they're entirely massive. Um, one of those there. We'll put another one on that corner. If we can do it without blowing everything up. Um, okay, no, we can't quite put it as near to the path as I would like. Yeah, one just there. And then we'll twist that one round. And one near that path. Because they look good. I like them. And then can we have another wizened sort of looking tree thing? So we go to there. Maybe another one this side, another one kind of looming in from that side. There we go. That looks a little bit more interesting. That looks like a... Oh, yeah, there's more to look at there. And it's pushed our version ever so close. Okay, right. I'm happy with that. Let's see if people actually go back out that way and do some fighting. We'll move time on nice and fast. We also want to watch this cash roll in. We could do with the money coming in. There's little gaggles of people gathering and chatting and stuff. It's wonderful. Look at all the people coming into the Hume's Heights. In search of new quests and new things to do. Is there anybody going to have a fight though? We need to have a little look. Oh look, there's like a group of friends on this here. Oh, they're having an absolute whale of a time. Look at the amount of smiley emoji faces. Apart from that person who there was worrying about a tornado. But apart from that, everyone seemed very, very happy. So yeah, is anyone going to come out here? Once they've completed their quests over here. Lots of ding-dings, people getting XP and levelling up and what have you. Um, has anyone come out and have a little go at the yeah tees? Or is that not quite what they're here for? Dave Weowers has logged in. Dave, you log in. That's always the best times. There's a whole new area. Come over here. It's lovely. It's snowy. It's cold. It's very, very pretty. And there's some ludicrous new monsters for you to go and fight. Ah, now, here. Here is somebody who looks like they're going to take on the yeah tees. This is... Athadar. Athadar or Athadar? Good luck. I think you'll be okay. What level are you? You're level three and you're doing Massacre the Yetis. I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be fine doing this. So yeah, have a little fight. Have a little... Okay, you weren't okay. You were less than okay. You're... you're yeah, okay. Okayness has not become you. It, it's gone... It's gone badly. It's gone badly for Athadar. Um, you're going home to log out. Whereabouts are you? Are you just... Oh, have you just logged out? Maybe you've logged out. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, did did, uh, did I upset Athadar there with a slightly too hard quest? And Dave has joined Athadar in the realms of the dead because Dave Wee Hours has also died. Oh, dear me. Whereabouts were you, Dave? Oh, we can't find out because the notification went away. Um, never mind. And what I'm doing is I'm just running on toward the end of the day just to see what money we have at the end of the day and then to see what happens with the buzz and the subscribers and stuff. Does something actually happen? at the end of the day to actually bring everything back down. I don't know, but this place looks very good. This place looks very pretty indeed. It looks really lovely. It looks, I imagine it's quite quiet because snow deadens noise, doesn't it? So I imagine it's quite a peaceful place and there's no monsters over near the city itself. There's no monsters over near the sort of urban area. Dave, we hours has died. Hang on, hang on. Where have you died, Dave? Let's go to Dave. Oh, he's all the way over here. He's in, he's in his own land of latte. Okay, so you've died but you're going back in for another fight. Oh, it, look at it over here. It's so busy over here. People are loving the fighting over here. Oh my word. How many people are in this place? 461. And I think they're all in this fighting area. They're all in this combat bit. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, look at all the people fighting. There's, there's so much going on over here. And yeah, now we can see the warriors and the scouts. 
So the scouts are the Robin Hood style people, and um, yeah, the warriors are the orange kind of people for no real reason except that orange looks good on them. And and I challenge you if you think otherwise. Oh look at there's just so many people. There's so many people in the land of Latte. It's looking very good. But even there's loads of people over there. There are still quite a few people over here. There are quite a few people over here in the lovely Hume sites. Okay, we just missed that thing now. Uh, what I want to do is, yeah, let's get to the end of the day. So let's just see what happens. So it's not long. And then I want to get a, a bird connection thing into it, but I don't know if we're going to have enough money. So let's just see what happens when it gets to midnight. So let's wait for it to roll over. So 50 something. So, okay. So what happens now? So Buzz860, subscribers 7346 then, let's say. So 7346. 860. So the subscribers absolutely tumble down. So loads of people at midnight unsubscribe. Loads of people. And the positive buzz just utterly tumbles. Okay, now I know that's a thing that happens. I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. That's fine. The only thing is we're finding it difficult to get any more subscribers. It's becoming tricky to get more people playing. We're kind of okay around 7,000. It goes up a bit. And then when the day ends, it comes back down again. So we're struggling to get any further than that really no matter what we do and of course we need more subscribers to give us more lovely money so we can build more lovely zones and do more lovely stuff in cupboard quest but yeah we're struggling a little bit okay fine well there we go um we've got ourselves five and a half grand now can we build i bet we can't even build a bird thing can we we can't even build one of the bird path things because that's going to be way too expensive one of the uh, majestic sky pigeon routes from say vosros valley to over there and then it also over here as well into the Ebba Forest would be nice as a little, you know, connecting flight type thing. But yeah, I bet we can't afford it. Let's just have a quick look, shall we? Let's have a look. So go to there. Can we click this one to say yes? That's the focal point. So go. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, we need to click you, don't we? I forgot about that. So click from there. Bring it along to here. Yeah, it's it's going to be expensive. It's going to be about 7,200 monies. And we don't have that right now. Um, OK, what if we just move time on? Very, very fast indeed. And just see, oh, bye, Dave, from wee hours. Bye. Enjoy your evening or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, come back soon. Uh, let's see if we can get 7,200 money. And we'll put it, maybe actually we can make it a bit cheaper. We'll put it here, look. Because that gets people into the place. So, do you know what? Yeah, there we go, look. The Humes Heights can have access to a majestic sky pigeon point. Although... I don't know what's go what is happening to this. <laughs> so, okay, I'm bailing out of that. I'm bailing out of that. That went all sorts of weird. I think I might have to build it here and connect it to the one over in Vosros Valley rather than the other way around, I think. I think that's what it was expecting. It was expecting a point on this side. So if we say, yes, build that there, cost a thousand to actually get the thing in place and then connect it over here, say to there for 6,900 monies, click, there we go. Right, that's now in. We have ourselves a majestic sky pigeon, which is going to have to fly through a kind of wall and a tower, but that's probably fine. So yeah, there we go. So now hopefully they are connected and people can go between the two zones and that is all marvellous. Okay, right, there we go. So we spent a great big chunk of cash. We do not have very much more cash to spend right now. Although, yeah, we will get some probably by midday on day five. Um, I realised that we didn't really get round to doing this. I wanted to get our latest... So next player done. But I guess we did the Master Brewers uh, last time. So next time out, what we'll do is we shall design our sixth player class. And I've got a good idea of what I want from this. I've got a pretty good idea. So we'll design them. We'll get them in. And then, yeah, we just need some more money. We need some more money. We need some more cash. And yeah, we need some more subscribers. We need this to sort of tick up a little bit higher. So, um, so yeah, we'll do all that kind of stuff next time. And we will indeed finish up for the moment. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. I very, very much hope you are. If you are, then please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you are not already, then please do subscribe in order to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in MMORPG Tycoon 2. And of course, in the lovely lands of Cupboard Quest. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Right, if we connect to there and open the door, we're going to get vaporized by this laser. And there's an electronic thing, which looks like a sad kind of Game Boy. <laughs> I'm a tiny little sort of uh, sort of stick person in a, in a computer. I can't steer the train as such. And look, we are outside and we're in a gutter. Oh, happy days. Hello, Leaf.